The first step in a crowd simulation is to configure the agents, or the characters that we are going to use in our scene. And all we need is a 3D model of our character. If our character is going to be something static that doesn't move at all, just the 3D model will be enough. But in most cases, our characters will have some kind of animation, they will behave in a certain way, move from one place to another. If that is the case, our 3D model must be rigged, meaning it must have a skeleton. In this series of videos, we are going to use models from Mixamo, Mixamo.com, because they are rigged, free and work very well. Let's click on the Characters tab and choose one of these. I'll pick this one, a very basic mannequin. If I click here on the skull icon, I can see the rig or skeleton of my character. This is what I'll need later to animate my character. Ok, let's go now to the Animations tab. Here we have a huge library of animations that we can assign to our character. For now, we don't want any animation, we just want to configure our agent, our character. So I'm going to look for a T-Pose, a neutral pose, and click on Download. Here we have a few options. We are going to use models in the FBX format, but later on we'll see that we could actually use any format as long as it is supported by Houdini. Here I'm going to choose the first option. How many frames per second are we working at? In films, we usually work at 24 frames per second. Now, do we want the rig or skeleton with the skin, the body, or without the skin, just the rig? We want to download the rig with the skin. And this keyframe reduction thing, let's leave it as none and click on download. Let's open Houdini and in the OBG context, press the tab key and create a geometry node. This node will be a container, or we could say a folder, where we will store our agent's information. Let's call it Agent Setup or something like that, and double click to go inside. Now, how do we convert our 3D model, the FBX we just downloaded, into an agent? Using the Agent node. Inside our Agent Setup node, Press Tab and create a new Agent node. You'll see a warning sign, but don't worry about it. On the Parameters window, let's go to the Input area and change this to FBX. Because as we said, we are going to use FBX files. Click here and look for the FBX we just downloaded, our mannequin character. Ok, so once you select the file, your character will appear in the viewport. Our character is already in Houdini here, is our mannequin. Now we are going to change its name, because the default name, as we can see here in the agent name parameter, is agent1, and that's not a very intuitive name. Let's put here our character's real name, Mannequin. And my recommendation is that you also change the name of the node, because later on, when we start creating a bunch of nodes here, it will be easier for you to identify your agents. I'm going to call it Mannequin. Be careful with this. This is the name of the node, and this one is the name of the agent. They are two different things. In order to optimize, we could change the agent name parameter to $OS. What the heck is this, this $OS? Well, this is a Houdini internal code. By putting $OS here, the value of this will be the same as the name of our node. Because we called our node mannequin, this reference here will make the agent name to be Mannequin2. 
If you place the pointer on agent name and middle click, you'll see the result of that expression, which is mannequin. Now, if I change the name of the node to, for example, man, the agent name parameter will also change to man. Whatever the name of the node is, will be the value of the agent name parameter. This way, I don't have to write the same thing in two different places. Let's set the name back to mannequin. The other thing we have to do is here, in the current clip parameter. FBX files are very good because they not only contain the model itself, the 3D model, but can also include animations in the same file. When we import an FBX here, as we previously did with the agent node, and press the arrow on the current clip parameter, we see a list of all the animations that are included in this FBX file. We have one called take underscore 001, and another one called mixamo.com. If we check them out, let's put first the take underscore 001, and then the mixamo.com, we see that both poses are very very similar. There is a small difference. The mixamo.com has the legs a bit closer and the arms are also a bit different. Where do these two animations come from? Whenever we download a character from Mixamo, it contains an animation called take underscore 001, which is the t-pose made by the modeler when the model was created. And the other one Mixamo.com is the animation we chose on the website. In our case, because we picked the T-Pose animation, these two clips are almost identical. One was done by the modeler of this character, and the other is the one generated by Mixamo. If instead of choosing a T-Pose, I had chosen a dancing animation like this B-Boy, take underscore 001 would still be the one made by the modeler, the original typos, but mixamo.com would be our mannequin dancing. Let's leave the current clip parameter empty, because right now we don't want to apply any animation to our character. Scroll down on the parameters window and in the clip area we'll change this clip name parameter to T-pose. With this, we are getting rid of that take underscore 001 clip and keeping only the animation from Mixamo, that from now on will be called T-pose. And this is all we need to set up our agent in Houdini. Our character, our mannequin, is now ready to be animated.